All right, everyone. Uh, today is Web Development Bell Day week four. And uh, welcome back from a great Independence Day weekend. I hope you guys all had fun, but um, let's get started. Yay. All right, so uh, for introductions, Rayan uh, is not here with us for these couple of weeks, three, three to four weeks. Um, and he'll see you guys back in August. And as for me, I'm still here, guys. Um, no need to introduce myself over and over again. Just to remind you guys uh, who we are as your, um, I guess, teachers. All right, so for today's uh, agenda, just wanted to recap um, or review the, the change in the July schedule that we had. Um, we introduced that last week, but just wanted to remind you guys of that. Set number two is the would you rather of the day, uh, choose this or that. Um, uh, this one is a cool one, so I hope you guys like it. And the third one, problem of the day, that's the actual problem of the uh, web development bell day. And let's get started. All right, so um, for the change in July, the last two weeks of July, let me annotate, oh, Drake is here, and let me annotate. All right, so the last two weeks of July, including the 15th, um, will be moved to the first two weeks of August. So 15th is canceled, and um, every session in these last two weeks will be moved to August. And let me clear those drawings. All right, um, next. Next is the would you rather. Question of the day. Drum roll, please. No. All right, before we do that, um, I don't see any new faces or um, personal profile pictures, but um, if you do still need the Google Classroom code, here it is, QAF7IBJ. Um, let me know if you want me to send you the link. Doesn't look like it, so I'll go to the next slide. All right, the would you rather question of the day. Would you rather explore the world by plane or by road trip? So like a car or RV or something like that. I would explore the world by a plane. All right, I always got to explain why. I like um, to be in the air, it's just, I just like being in the plane, it makes me like I'm luxurious. Okay. Anyone want to agree or counter that? Plane or road trip? Car, because then I, because then I could also see the world below, and uh -huh. not just by, and actually enjoy the journey instead of an hour. Now that's the second uh, viewpoint. Um, you get to see so much like passing by on your way to wherever you're going, basically exploring the world. But uh, do keep in mind that on a road trip, you're usually on a highway or a, an, a freeway between two states, um, interstate highway, something like that. So you won't see like the, the natural beauty as much, but that's, that's definitely um, an acceptable <laughs> explanation. Anyone else? Or would you would you guys prefer another form of transportation? See, I would want to explore the, the world by ship. Um, go from country to country by ship. Explore the sea, like a cruise. Um, yeah. Anyone else? All right. All right, let, let's let's actually get um, some votes in. I gotta tell Rayon when he comes back. Um, so uh, how many of us would rather fly to go somewhere to explore the world? So on a plane, um, give me a thumbs up or a, a, what's another emoji? Let's see. 
Okay, Bjorn, um, I just saw the chat. You No, you're not doing that. <laughs> but it's, it's not Rickroll, mate. It's not Rickroll. Uh, I'm, I'm done with that. It's not Rickroll. Don't worry. You can click on it. I, I, yeah, I, I tried it. It's fine. No, I, I don't believe you guys now. <laughs> It's actually, it looks like it's a spaceship. Am I right, Bjorn? Yeah, it's something like that. Uh-uh. <laughs> nope. All right. Um, end of the story for this, then. I, I'm not getting Rickle today, just like Thursday. Um, but looks like Plane is winning. Oh, I never asked Road Trip. So Road Trip, how many of us would want a Road Trip? Give me a thumbs up. No. All right. Chase is the only one don't worry chase i uh, actually agree with you i've been on several road trips like two-day road trips and they are amazing all right so that was the would you rather question of the day and now it's time for this week's problem now i personally really like this problem because it uh, combines a really cool math pattern with coding so the problem of this week is write a program to tell if a number is an Armstrong number or not. So before we do code this, we need to know what an Armstrong number is. So uh, here's an example. We'll start with an example and then come to the definition. That way we can understand it really quickly and efficiently. So we start with the number 153. We want to know if it's an Armstrong number. We basically um, cube the first digit, second digit, and third digit. And if the addition or the sum of all three of those numbers equals to the same number that we started with, that's an Armstrong number. Now, the reason we are cubing uh, these numbers is because there are three digits. If there were four digits, we would uh, raise them to the power of four. Uh, so before we do uh, continue coding, we will do some whiteboard uh, to see whether we really understand what um, an Armstrong number is. And let me start up a whiteboard and then we'll, uh, we'll go through the things we need to code because we really need to know what an Armstrong number is. Here we go. All right, so um, the number we knew that is an Armstrong number is 153. But let's test another number, if it's an Armstrong number. Let's see if 123 is an Armstrong number. So what do we do? Um, let me try to draw. OK, I'll try to draw, guys. Let's see if I can. So basically, how many digits are there? Anyone? How many digits? Three. All right. All right. Pretty easy question, easy answer. Um, now, uh, we actually have to add the cubes of the first digit, second digit, and third digit. So one cubed plus two cubed plus three cubed. Now, can anyone tell me what this is? One plus, what's two cubed? So two times two times two. Eight. Six. Nice. So that's eight plus three cubed. What's three times three times three? 27. Nice. Looks like we are doing great without Avanish today. <laughs> All right, so one plus eight plus 27 turns out to be 36. Now, we need to check if 36 is equal to 123, which we started with, which it is not. So we have concluded that, oops, that this is not, not an Armstrong number. Um, now, let me get a list of Armstrong numbers. So we can see how many there are. So, um, 
here. So the list of Armstrong numbers, I'm just gonna copy and paste it from Google. It, it's a pretty long list, just so we understand it, and it's cool. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, because of course, one to the first power is equal to one. That's Armstrong. Um, so all one digits are included. Then 153, the example that we started with, 370. Now, uh, let's just try 370 and 371. Um, and then we'll be done with whiteboarding. So 370. All right, let's do some fast math. So what's three cubed? Again, it's going to be cubed because there are three digits plus seven cubed plus zero cubed. Shout it out if you got the answer. So three cubed is 27 plus seven cubed. Let's see if I know this. I don't. So 49 times seven, what is that? 49 times seven is 343. Um, and then zero cubed is zero. So in the end, we get 27 plus 343, which is 370. Now it's really uh, satisfying um, from a math or a computer science perspective to see a number um, starting, uh, I mean, a number, the number starting goes through some calculations and then it ends up to be the same number. So it comes back into a circle. Now that's, that's pretty cool to me. Um, yeah, so uh, that was 370, 370. Now, if we see 370 and 371 are both Armstrong numbers, the reason is 370 plus one cubed is 371. So there you go. Now, of course, we're not going to go through all these numbers, but they are here just for us to know how many there, how many Armstrong numbers there are. But now uh, it is time to do some code. But before we do write some code, we got to review what we will be using. All right. So things needed to solve this problem. Variables. Variables are always uh, think of them as containers, bar, something is equal to something, holding the user number. Um, that's what we will be uh, using variables for today. So we're going to input a number, suppose 153, and we're going to hold that number in a variable. Second is functions. So functions are used as containers again, but instead of holding uh, some sort of data like number or string, we hold code. Uh, that runs when we call that function. And we'll use uh, functions today to do the math operations to check if, um, if our number is a Armstrong number or not. And finally, we will be using loops today. And the reason why we will use loops is we got to, we have to go through each digit in the number and that requires some sort of um, loop or repetition uh, and we'll be using a for loop, so iterating over the numbers digits. All right. So um, by now, we should be pretty uh, confident on variables because we have been going over them for the past four weeks. But um, one last time, just want to review them. Containers, you can store values in, just like I said. Now, um, we. One way to master a language is to memorize the syntax. And the more you look at the syntax and type it out, the faster you get to memorize it. That's why we've got these examples on the screen. So uh, variables in JavaScript are always var. Name of the variable is equal to whatever value you want to set the variable to. So for example, var x is equal to 5. And that's it. And all right. Yeah, we don't, we don't have to spot the variables in this block of code. All right. And then number two, functions. Function syntax is as the following. 
So we write function. Let me annotate so we can see where I am, what I am talking about. Right. So we have function. We just we have to write function whenever we do define a function. So that stays the same for any and every function we make, at least in in beginner to intermediate JavaScript. And then uh, after that is the function name, the thing in purple. You can name that any and everything you want, uh, in, except you can't add in certain symbols because that, um, for example, parentheses, because that uh, confuses whoever or whatever is compiling this piece of code. So um, the function name comes after function. And then finally, the open and close parentheses. And then the open and close brackets, braces. Now inside the parentheses comes the, the, the parameters. So these parameters are basically variables passed into the function. So whatever you will use inside these uh, braces. Um, now suppose I did pass in a param one, then I can use that param one over here, um, change that, uh, add one to param one, and then return it. Or I cannot, it doesn't really matter. And then finally, this, this last part, return statements. Um, now, return statements can be confusing, but we have been going through uh, return statements. We have used them a couple of times uh, in the past few weeks. So shouldn't be that hard to understand by now. We did use them uh, heavily in the Python set of uh, sessions that we did in the past five months. But just to review, return statements basically spew out an output. So these parameters, let me change my color so you guys understand. These parameters are the input. And this return output is the output that this function spews out. So whenever you call this function, so suppose I call this function f So f name, very nice. Yeah, f name. So I'm calling this function and then I add in param one and param two. So let's say I add in one comma two. Here I call this function. If I if I had returned an output, this f name would return or the value of this 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 piece of syntax would be the value of output. So if I set this function to a var, so var x is equal to this function, then var x will be equal to this output because this functioning is this function is returning this output. So that's like a lot of um, lecture notes, whatever you guys want to say, but um, we have to teach you guys at, at a certain point and then if you guys have any questions, do ask them. But I hope that was understandable. Yes, no. You guys can shout it out or type it in the chat. No, we don't understand or understand. So basically functions with parameters and return statements in JavaScript. Yes, no. All right, no problem. Um, I will go ahead right now. And you, if you guys have any questions, do feel free to ask them. Let me stop annotating and all right. So um, last thing, loops. Um, let me clear my drawings first. All right, loops are here to help us repeat certain things over an array or just repeat it a number of times. Um, right now, uh, today we'll be using loops to iterate through each digit of a number. And for that, um, here's, here's a question for you guys. Do you think we'll be using for loops or while loops? Now, before, before I do ask that, let's see if you guys know what uh, for loops are used for specifically. Hint, hint, it's written on the screen. For iterating anything through an array. Very nice, Chase. Thank you. Thanks, I thought it all by myself. <laughs> and then what about a while loop? 
to do something until something fails. Yeah. So uh, if some so until something turns false. So um, today, instead of iterating through an array, we will be iterating through a number for each digit that that number has. So what kind of loop do you guys think? We Anyone? You guys can guess if you don't know. It doesn't hurt. You have 50% chance to be right. A while loop? Um, not quite, because uh, for a while loop, you need a Boolean or a variable that is either true or false. For us, we won't be using that variable. Instead, we just have a number like 153 that the user inputs and we go through each number of that or each digits of that number. So one, five, and three. And we will be iterating through each digit and cubing them and then summing the total to check if the sum is equal to the original number. So um, thanks for guessing, but uh, the loop that we will be using is a for loop. Uh, because we'll instead of iterating through an array, we'll be iterating through a string, which is an array of characters. All right. Let me clear drawings and stop annotating. Cool. Um, so we did uh, do the math behind the Armstrong number. We did that before going through the code review. So let's skip this whiteboard and let's go to our coding website, jsfiddle.net. Let me stop sharing and I'll put the link in the chat. I'll put the link for making your own JS Fiddle and the link that I'm working on. All right. All right, so um, keep signing me out for some reason. Here we go. All right, here we go. I have put both links in the chat. The second one is the one that I'm on. And I will try to get the, oh yeah, live code validation is on. So that should be good. Now let me start sharing and I should do it. All right, collaboration is also on. So the link for collaboration is here, the third one. But if you just want to access the code, uh, the second one should do. All right. Let's go. You all can see my screen. Okay, yes. <laughs> Hello, Deathcraft13. Uh, wait, what? All right. Okay. That should do it. Let's go ahead and get started. We won't be working on any HTML today uh, because today's web development building, we just solve problems. HTML is on Wednesday. So let's go ahead and open up and make this bigger. There we go. Make our JavaScript bigger and let's get started. So handling screens while sharing your screen on Zoom is a hassle. I hope I'm doing work though. So uh, number one thing that, uh, one of the things that we talked about when we were reviewing is we'll need functions. Um, and the function that we'll need right now is basically to calculate or to determine whether uh, the number is an Armstrong number or not. So basically what the problem is doing, we're gonna put all of that inside a function. So is 
function is Armstrong. is weird all right is anyone changing anything if you are please um refrain from touching or clicking on anything uh, because that does mess up the code all right gotta get my mac to charge all right function is okay that's weird it's okay, let's rename that function to not is Armstrong, but just Armstrong number. That is really weird. You guys see what's happening? Um, if you go to settings, you turn on, um, uh, just a second, uh, you turn on Live. Ah, uh, thank you. Yeah, no, that's still happening. It's the live code validation, I think. Yeah, I did. I did uh, turn that off again, but. Hmm. That's weird. Arms. Okay, that that one. Uh, Armstrong. I think it thought that I was gonna type in something else, but I'm not. So that worked. So inside our function, we're gonna pass in one and only one parameter, which is our input number. So input number goes inside the function. And we do something with it, and we return another output. But before we do start coding all that, um, make sure you guys are new. So, um, sorry, Leo, what are we doing today? Um, hey, Avanish. So today we are doing. Uh, we're tr we're finding out whether um a number is an Armstrong number or not. I will put the the question in the chat. What's an Armstrong number? Yeah, um, so an Armstrong number is what you see on, on the screen. If we, we want to check if 153 is an Armstrong number, we cube the first, second, and third digit, so all digits. And if the sum of those uh, numbers is equal to 153, then 153 is an Armstrong number. Okay. And that, that's a really, really brief um, so, uh, review of what an Armstrong number is. If you still want to know more, just Google it really fast while I'm coding. And I put the, the problem of the day in the chat. So that should work as well. All right, so we got our function made. Um, let's see if the function is running. And we will put in 153 because we know that 153 is an Armstrong number. And let's just return is an Armstrong number for now. So if we do run that, my console isn't. What does a return part do? Um, so the return, uh, we worked with this in, oh, what? All right, okay, cool. Um, so return just returns whatever value you want to return whenever the function is called. So oh. I called the function Armstrong, put in my parameter 153 as the input number, and I just returned is an Armstrong number for now just to see if our function is working. So if I do run, it is not. It says Armstrong is not defined because I didn't spell it correctly. So now when I fix that, I do get in my console down here. I think that should be good enough for now. 
Yeah, so we see is, is an Armstrong number run. So this function is working. But right now we don't want to hard code it. So every time someone inputs a number, we have to change the code and tell them whether it's an Armstrong number or not. We want the code to determine whether it is an Armstrong number or not. So let's go ahead and do it. Um, first, we have to start with a couple of variables. So var sum will be our sum that we want to check with the original number. And that will start with zero. And I'll tap that already. Right. And then we're gonna have a string version. So var num str is equal to just the input number dot to string. Now what this does, um, this is a very important line uh, to understand the difference between a number and a string. What I put inside these, uh, the, uh, these parentheses as a parameter is 153 as a number, but the, what will be useful for me is 153 as a string because then I can go through each digit uh, without having to divide or mod or anything like that. So I transformed this number into the string using input number dot to string. Now that's done. And that should be about it. Now we start our loop. Now, as Chase told us, we will be using a for loop because we are iterating through um, a string, which is an array of characters. So the way for loops work in JavaScript is for var i is equal to zero because we start with zero until i is less than, or while, uh, while i is less than basically the length of num str. So three, three in this case, but we don't want to hard code it. So we're gonna say num str dot length. And then finally, i plus plus. Open braces, close braces, and that should be good for our for loop. Now, what goes inside the for loop? Now guys, I am just coding and explaining each, each line as I code it. If you guys have any questions, just feel free to shout out. Like for example, why num.str.length and not three or dot length plus one. And uh, if it starts at zero, will it end at two or three? I'll just tell you guys. I will end at two. So zero, one, two will go three times because there are three digits and yeah. So um, inside the for loop for each digit, what action do we want to perform? I'll go back to our um, example of what we do with each digit. Anyone want to tell me? Just a review, but you guys tell me what to do. You cube it? Yeah, cube it. Um, so only cube it in this case because it's a three digit number. So we raise it to the power of how long the number is. Oh. Yeah. So uh, first step is cube. Uh, in this case, cube, but we just raise it to the power. Um, now, just to make our lives easier, we'll just um, start with having a power variable. So power is equal to um, num str dot length. So that's just three. So now um, we have to raise one to the third power and then five to the third power and then three to the third power. Um, to get those single digits, we'll, we'll need to use something called substring. Substring basically takes a string, um, any string, so anything with quotation marks around it. And I'll just comment it over here. So any string, actually, I'll just comment it over here because that's where we are working. So any string, let's say we have 153 inside quotation marks. Any string starts, um, has indices just like arrays. 
So the indices for 153 is 0, 1, 2. And if I want to access 1, I need to do that str, so the name of the string variable, dot substring, the first, um, first digit that we want to get, so 0, if I just want to um, get 1, and one digit or one index more than what we want to get. So if I just want to get the number one, that's add the zero index, of course. But to use substring, I have to say zero comma one. So we, it's such, this comma one basically says we want to end before one. And suppose I wanted to get, um, this, this will get us one. Suppose I want to get here, I will, I hope that's better. No, that's not. Right. Okay. So suppose I want to get um, 15. So I'll do str dot substring. And then instead of zero comma one, I'll do zero comma two because I want to end before two. So I'll get the indices zero and one, which will return 15. So that's a, that's a really brief overview of um, substring, but here goes uh, how we can use substring to go through each digit and raise it to the power of three. So um, first we set var um, digit to we first get the substring, so we have num str, that's the string version of the number, dot substring, all right, and inside here, instead of doing the 0, 1, 0, 2, or 1, 2, we will use our variable i that changes for each iteration of the for loop. So we'll be using i comma i plus one. So this will go through each iteration and first it'll spew out one, then it's gonna spew out five, and then it's gonna spew out three. Uh, just because we're, that's the number that, oh, 153 is the number that we put, in, that we are putting. So now we have our digit. Now what we wanna do is add the cube of that digit um, to our sum. But before we do that, we want to make sure that, that, that this digit is not a string. Um, what does this digit have to be in order for me to be able to cube it? Not a string, but... Lobney. Yeah? Oh, uh, what does str mean? Um, so this is the name of the variable. Um, I just said because it's the string version of the number that I put in. So this is uh, input number is the parameter that we put in. That's 153. And I set str, num str, num underscore str to the string version of input number. Okay. And then we use num str over here and over here. So it's a string, but it's 153 in a string. So that, that's this basically. So um, that kind of goes off of what I was uh, talking about. Right now we are in a string, but in order to apply math operations, what do we want to turn that string into? A number. So what we started with, this number. So um, it is very crucial in computer science to understand the difference between a number, which is just 153, and a string, which is 153 inside quotation marks. So right now we want to turn this digit from one to just one. And to do that, it's a very simple um, function that we use that's already built into JavaScript, which is parse int. That is it, my guys. So we parse int. Um, whatever uh, string we want to parse int, 
and that converts the, the string with quotation marks into a number. Now we can use this number to add the cube of it to the sum. So I'm going to say sum plus equals. So uh, I'll start with sum equals sum plus what we had digit. Um, so for our doing exponents, there's another function that we do use. So it's called math.pow. So math.pow, the first pr parameter for that will be the number, the bottom number, the base number, which is a digit. And the second number is power. That's the variable we created in line six, which is the length of the string. So that should be it. And let's go ahead. Sum is equal to sum plus that. And that should finish our for loop. Finally, instead of returning is a number, we will return true or false. We just want to check whether sum is equal equal to the input number that we started with. And this will return what a, a true or false statement whether the number is an Armstrong number or not. Now, I coded all this in front of you guys, but um, this can be buggy, but the only way to see if it is, is to run. Let's go ahead and run. Um, what we see in the console right here is this purple true, which is satisfying because that is correct. Um, we did put in 153, which we know is an Armstrong number. Now let's put in 121, which we tested is not an Armstrong number, or 123. We tested, which is not an Armstrong number. And let's see if the computer or our code that we just made uh, confirms that. Yep, and it says false. It is not an Armstrong number. So guys, um, this is it. This is uh, the code for today's problem figuring out whether any number that the user inputs is an Armstrong number or not. Now, let's see. So we had that list of, of Armstrong numbers and one of the numbers was this huge number. I think it was like, like 4 billion, five, six seventy nine million three oh seven. Thousand, uh, yeah, 1,774. This is supposed to be an Armstrong number, but let's see if our code does understand that. Well, it does because it does return out a true. So that is it for the code today. Um, we started with, okay, we started with a problem. Actually, we started with a, um, a, a cool phrase or Cool, would you rather? But then the problem of the day was figuring out whether um, a number was an Armstrong number or not. And we figured it out using math on our own on a whiteboard. We understood what it meant to solve for an Armstrong number. And then we coded um, a computer or in JavaScript for the computer to understand whether a number is an Armstrong number or not. So um, that is it. Today, for today, guys, um, that's for Web Development Bell Day. Um, come tomorrow for MIT App Inventor. We'll be creating a cool app. We'll be starting a big app. And that's it. See you guys next week. Oh, Lobney, can you go back to the JS Fiddle? Yep, definitely. Hi, there's class. Yes. Go ahead. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, bye. Bye. See you next week. I mean, tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Bye. Oh, yeah. Bye. All right. All right. See you, Joe. Oh, I forgot to stop recording. No.